Genesis 22. The book of Genesis chapter 22. Glory be to God. The book of Genesis chapter 22. I'll begin reading from verse 3 and we'll springboard to Isaiah 51. Genesis 22 verse 3. The Bible says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning. He saddled his ass. He took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son. And cleaved the wood for the burnt offering. And rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes. He saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand, and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, and said, My father, and he says, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham says, said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. You can stop right there. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Verse 1. Hearken to me, yea, that follow after righteousness, yea, that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence you were healed and to the hole of the pit where you were dig. Look unto Abraham your father, unto Sarah that bore you. I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. He will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. You can stop right there. This morning, I want to talk to you about a compass conversation with the Father, a conversation with the Father. I will, I, will, I will first of all admit to you that whenever, as I begin to search or look in the Word of God as to how or what I was going to preach on and begin to kind of um, uh, almost uh, uh, cook uh, per se, because every time, I, every time I, I, I preach, I'm feeding. And for me to feed, I need to first of all get my ingredients. And, and as I was getting all, or, or, or gathered all my ingredients, I, I want to tell you that it was hard to gather my ingredients because I, I looked at Adam and I said, maybe I can get something from Adam. And, and when I looked at Adam and I looked at his children and I saw how one of his, his child, as he, as he gets Cain and Abel to come, to come out from him and, and how Cain would kill Abel. And how and how and how when even when God will confront Cain and say you ki you killed your, your brother, Cain will look at God and square in the face and will say, "Am I my brother's keeper?" And so I saw that that that, that Abraham may have failed or, 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 or uh, Adam may have failed as a father. Then I looked, I looked, I said, "Well, maybe I could glean something from Noah. I could I could maybe glean something."
from Noah. And so I went to Noah and tried to try to glean something from him. And, and, and there again in Genesis, in Genesis 9, I saw how, how Noah would, 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 would now eat, drink from the, uh, from, from, from the fruit of, of, of the vine and, and would get drunk. And the Bible says Ham came and he saw his father's nakedness or he did something to his father. Whatever he did to his father, either he was a Peeping, peeping Tom, or he actually did something to his father. We don't know, but whatever he did, the Bible says that when 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 Noah woke up and found out what was done to him, he cursed him and Canaan. And so I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't touch him. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't get my ingredients from him. And and so I said, I said, well, 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 maybe I could get something from Aaron. Aaron happens to be um, Moses's uh, uh, brother, and, and happens to be the first high priest. I said, maybe I could get something from Aaron since he was the first high priest. It's amazing how many times we walk with God, but we don't teach our children how to walk with God. And so when I went to Aaron, I, I saw Aaron had two children, Nahab and Abihu. And it wasn't long before I saw they were walking in the, in the, in the footsteps of, uh, of their father. However, the Bible says in, 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 in Le Leviticus chapter 10 that they began to burn strange fire they were burning strange fire and the Bible says God saw that and and fire came down from heaven and consumed them so I couldn't use Aaron I couldn't use Aaron so I said maybe I could use I could I could fast forward and maybe use Eli Eli happens to be a descendant of, uh, 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 of, of, of Aaron. And I said, maybe I could use, Aaron. I, could, I could stay with the, the priestly line and use Levi and Eli. And I found out Eli had two boys also. And those two boys, the Bible says that they were, they, were, they were, first of all, stealing money from the church and sleeping with women. So I couldn't use them. I couldn't, I couldn't it was too much like home. I, I, I couldn't use them. In other words, it was too much like, like what we see nowadays. I couldn't use them and so I said I said um I said well maybe maybe I could use maybe I could go back and try to use um maybe I could try to use Isaac since Isaac was a promised child and and, 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 and his father was Abraham Abraham did well by Isaac and maybe I could use Isaac as a springboard because Abraham may be obvious and maybe I could use Isaac but when I go to Isaac I see Isaac had two boys also Two boys, it's amazing. Two is two, it's always two, two, two boys. And, and one of them was Jacob, and, and one was Esau. Jacob's name means trickster, a conniver, deceiver. Uh, when you name your child trickster and deceiver and, and conniver, he don't, he don't stand a chance. I say he don't stand a chance. And so J Jacob, Jacob did what Jacob would do. He, he lived up to his name, to, to the fullest potential. The Bible says in, in Genesis 25, right after Abraham dies, in Gen Genesis 25, that, 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 that Jacob would come to Esau and he would say, he would say, sell me your birthright. Esau, Esau being naive and being, being hungry and, and not, not recognizing what he had. It's amazing how we give up what, what we had, what we have that, God, that is a value that God, has, that God has given us to only to exchange it with something that is just, that, is, that, is, that will pass away. Are you following me? We give up something of value that God has given you. In other words, you give up that, what, 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 how precious you are, how, what, what God has made you to be. You give up your innocency just for a just for few moments of pleasure. Are you following me now? And you derail your destiny. Now you get up and you have a child because you did not value what you had. Are you following me this morning? It's amazing how we, we, we devalue our Myself, well, I'm trying to please him. No, no, you ought to be trying to please God and not please him. And you follow me this morning. And so Jacob would give, or, or, or Esau would give up his birthright. And, and, and Jacob would take, would deceive his brother and take his birthright. Then in Genesis 29, 
We 27, excuse me. We see how how Jacob Jacob now uh, because he found he finds out that he was not he wasn't he wasn't uh, he wasn't the favorite child, and so him and his mama decided they're gonna trick their daddy, amen, to receive the blessing. How messed up is that? Are you following me now? And you thought your family's a mess. Are you following me? It's all throughout the Bible. And so the Bible says, now Esau founds, finds out that, 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 that Jacob tricked him and, and he's coming for Jacob's neck. However, Jacob runs to his uncle's house, Laban. And if, 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 if Jacob was a trickster, Laban is the master trickster. Are you following me? So I, I couldn't, I couldn't lose, I couldn't use Isaac because Isaac had failed as a, as a father. Couldn't use Isaac. Couldn't use him. Not only did Isaac fail as a father, but as I begin to dig some more, I'm over here, I, I'm, 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 you know, what, I'm beginning to look, dig some more. I'm like, how them grown? Now this ain't no, you know, you know, when you, when you look at the scripture, sometimes you don't know how old these people are. As I look at the scripture, I'm thinking they are like, you know, teenagers running around. Well, I'm going to deceive you and take your blessing. These were not teenagers. It, it, are you, these not, these, when, when Jacob steals, when Jacob steals Esau's blessing, guess how old they were? 77 years old. 77 year old in his mama house. <laughs> Told my mama, Dad's gonna fi- daddy is going to find out. And so, and so mama said, I'm going to take care of you. Put some, put some greasy uh, uh, hair on your, on your hand so, 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 so daddy don't know, not going to know who, who it is. First of all, your daddy ain't stupid. Several times he's trying to get Jacob, Jacob to, to fess up. He said, is it really you, is it really you Esau? Esau, come over here. Esau, come over here. Let me smell you. He wasn't stupid. He knew exactly who he was. However, if you're going to go through all that motion, I'm going to just give you the blessing anyhow. Lest you you take a curse on you. Are you following me? If you're going to go through all that effort to lie to me, I'm going to give you the blessing. Are you following me now? So I I couldn't use Isaac. So I said, well, maybe, maybe I could use, uh, maybe I could use David. David, David was a man after God's own heart. Da- David, God handpicked David. He was the, the second king of Israel. And maybe I could use David because David was a man that ran after God. He was a lover of God. God himself says, uh, he, he says, he says, he says, David is a man after my own heart. He handpicked this man called David by way of his prophet Samuel. But when I looked at David's life, I see how his, one of his boys were, was eyeing, eyeing his stepsister and would rape his stepsister just because of a, a desire that he had that he couldn't shake off. Then I saw the brother of the stepsister, having found out that he raped his sister, would now come and kill his brother. Then I found out that not only did that Absalom, the brother, not only did he do that, but he said, well, I'm, going, I'm not only going to kill the, my brother, but I'm also going to kill my daddy. And he takes his father's concubines and sleeps with his father's concubine in front of all of Israel. So I couldn't use David. So I had to go back. I had to fall back to my, I had to fall back to, uh, 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 to, to my favorite person in the Bible called Abraham. Abraham. Now, now, when I say favorite, don't get it twisted because Abraham also had issues. And so, really, really, I couldn't use, if I were to, if I were to pick a perfect father, I couldn't pick one in the Bible. And just like you couldn't pick, just like you can't pick a perfect, a perfect father in the Bible, you can't pick a perfect father in life. Are you following me? I, I want to give those of, those of you a break that, 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 that may have tried to X your father out just because there's something wrong with him. Uh, let me tell you, let me inform you something, honey. There's always going to be something wrong with a father. Because, because, but, but you ought to be grateful that, that if you had a father that stayed there, you ought to be grateful that he stayed there and he did the best he could because a good father is hard to find. Are you following me this morning? And so when I go into the book of, 
of Genesis, I couldn't help but to but to but but to pick this 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 scripture to begin to cook from. As I look at Genesis 22, the, the year is is the year is 2054. At this particular time, uh, Abraham has had his promise. Abraham, Abraham is it, it was called by God almost 25 years ago. He's called by God. He's called by God to, to do incredible things for God. Now, God did not call Abraham because Abraham was perfect. Matter of fact, when God called Abraham, Abraham was a moon worshiper. He worshiped the God of Zin. Zin. It was, it was, it, it was in the Ur of Chaldeans and in Haran, those two countries uh, were, 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 were heavily involved in moon worship. Matter of fact, uh, 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 Joshua speaking in Joshua 24 tells you and I that our ancestors worshipped other gods. Are you following me now? Patriarchs, they, they, they worshiped other gods. And so God comes to Abraham, not because of what Abraham knows about God, but because God wanted a covenant relationship with Abraham. And so God comes to Abraham and says, I'm going to do something amazing in your life. He says, he says, and he says, he says, and God, and in Genesis 12 verse 1, he says, he says, God speaks to Abraham and says, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. Now, why is he saying this? He's saying this because the previous chapter was, was when they were trying to build a name for themselves by building the, 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 the Tower of Babel. And so after that chapter, God, come, God comes to Abraham and says, instead of you trying to make your name great, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make your name great. Stop trying to make your name great, God says. He says, I'm going to be the one to make your name great. Are you following me now? No, no. God speaks to this man that, that was a moon worshiper and invites him to have a relationship with him. God brings this man and, and he tells him, he tells him, you're going to be a father of many nations. Abram, Abraham, his name, his name meant Abram, Abram, Abram means, it means exalted father. Abraham means father of many, of multitudes. Are you following me now? So, so as I begin to look at this text and, and, and to look at and see what would be a text that we can talk about or we can begin to glean from or, or understand as it relates to Father's Day, I couldn't help but to pick Abraham. His name means his na exalted father before God touched it. Then his name also means the father of many nations. And so I need to see what does father mean? What does that mean? Does it just mean another a, a male counterpart in a home that, is, that has a relationship with a woman and gives birth to a child? Is that the essence of what a father is? Hmm? Is it, is it just, well, I, well, well I, I, you know, the, 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 the one that has the spermer? Is that just, is that what the male is? Is that what the father is? And so I begin to pull the thread. I said, if this man has been called by God, his name is father, exalted father, or father of many nations, I need to understand what father is. And so as you, as you, as you pull the, the text back or when you go into the, the Hebrew language of the text, father, father means Abba. That's what it means, father. It means, well, that's not what it means. That's what it's, it's translated to be. That's the Hebrew connotation of father. It's Abba. Are you following me? In the Greek, it's called patra, pata, pata. Pata, pata. So in, in, in Hebrew is Abba, in Greek is pata, but I still don't know what it means. Are you following me now? Now, when you pull the word Abba, you understand two things. When you talk about Abba, you're, you're talking about the source. The source. It all, when, when, you, when you talk about Abba, Abba also means, it means, it, it means the support. The source, 
the support, but it also means the sustainer. The source, the support, the sustainer. The source, the support, the sustainer. So, so, so at best, a father is the source. When the Bible says that the man is the head, it means, no, he says the man is the head as Christ is the head of the church. What does that mean? Does that mean you're the boss? Hmm. Because Jesus is not bossing you around. When he asks you to do something, you tell him out, why, Lord? Or you simply just ignore him. <laughs> ignore him. You just ignore him. Like he ain't saying nothing to you. And you, you, just, you just tune him out. So he couldn't be your boss because if your boss tell you something to do and you don't do it, you ain't got but too many times to do that, do that before you get fired. Are you following me now? Sometimes you don't, you, you don't, sometimes you don't want to do it, but you do it because he's your boss or she's your boss. Are you following me? So it, it couldn't be, it couldn't be man is the head of the, of, of the, of, 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 of the, of the wife. It couldn't be a boss. Are you following? Because Jesus, well, well, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Since we're there. Let's go to um, Ephesians. Ephesians. Ah, uh, Ephesians 5. Hallelujah. I, I'm, I'm trying to peel back this, this definition as to Abba and Abba being father. But, but there, there are two things that we see in, in Abba is the word intimacy and the word obedience. Intimacy and what? And obedience. When you come into Abba, you come into, you come into intimacy and you come into obedience. Now, in, 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 in Ephesians 5, and let's, read, let's, let's look at, um, let's look at um, in verse, uh, uh, let's, let's look at, um, in, in, well, let's look at verse, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting yourselves one to another where? In the fear of God. Wives, submit your, your own selves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. And, and we choke there. Mm. We choke there. And you just mess, you, you, you didn't even understand what he's talking about. Now when you ain't your busting me, then you should have stayed single. Simple. I mean, why? Why you? I mean, you should have stayed single. Are you following? But you, but that's not. But but that's not even the meaning. If you're gonna have that attitude, then you should have stayed single. But that ain't the meaning. That's not even the meaning. Are you following me? That's not what the Bible is saying. Notice what it says. It says, "For the husband is the head of the wife, even as, even as, even as Christ is the head of the church, and and he, and he is what the Savior of the body." Therefore, as the church is the subject unto Christ, so let, let the wives be unto their own husband what in everything. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, what's he saying? He is the source. Without Christ, there's no church. He's the source. He is the sustainer. He is the support. Are you following me? It, it's, on, it's on that solid rock that we build everything. Are you following me now? What am I saying? As a father, you are the source, the support. Not, not, in other words, everything lies on your shoulder. You should be the, the reason why Adam, the reason why Canaan or, or Cain and Abel and all the other children, the reason why they failed was because Adam did not see himself as the source. Even though when God made him, he says, he said, the Bible says, he says, let us make man in our image. Are you following me now? What does that mean? In the, and he says, in our likeness. What does that mean? It means that everything, everything, everything that you and I see came from God. Why? Because God is the source. Are you following me now? And, and, when God, and, and, and when God spoke to a thing, he spoke, or when he, when he, uh, 
when he made a thing, he made a thing in connection to, the, to, a, to a source. What am, I, what am I saying? When he made the birds of the air, he first of all made the air before he made the birds. Are you following me now? When he made fish, he first of all made sea before he made fish. When he made the earth or ground, he made ground before he made uh, cattle. Are you following me now? Before he made man, he was. And he spoke to himself and man came out of him. Are you following me? What am I saying? Anything disconnected from the source will die. I said anything disconnected from the source will die. That's why the enemy, the enemy wants the woman to be disconnected from the man. Because when God now makes the woman, he didn't speak to himself. He speaks, he speaks to the source. Are you following me now? He didn't speak to himself when he was making the woman. He had already, he had already put the woman inside of the man. And so when, when, when a man fails to be the source or the support or the sustainer in the home, the home dies. Are you following me now? No, 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 no. And so when I, and so as I was, as I was looking at this text and looking at the at, at, at this, it just became it, it, it came big, it became bigger because the problem with the source is many times the source doesn't know how to tell you what he is. But now, now Abraham. Now, first of all, Abraham had been believing God for this child for for, for almost twenty five years. 25 years he's been believing God for, for the, when we, when, we meet, when, when we meet Abram, Abraham is a grown man. His father's name is Terah. Terah, Terah is, is uh, theologians tell us that Terah was one of the, uh, was one of the idol makers. He, he was responsible of making idols. Are you, as such, Abraham also was making idols. And, 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 and when Abraham met God, Abraham now was breaking away from his father. And, with some, and, 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 and because of the influence of Nimrod, Nimrod and, er, and Abraham were, 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 were going at it. In other words, Nimrod was trying to kill Abraham. And so this is, this is not Bible, but this is what theologians say. And so, and so, and so, Abraham and and, and Terah now have to side with Abraham, or he got converted with Abraham. Hence, they left the Ur of Chaldeans and moved to Haran. They moved to Haran, and the Bible says in Haran that Abraham, or, or in Haran, Terah, his father, dies. And God now speaks to him again and says, "Now go from where you are." And go to Canaan. Now, as I begin to pull this text, I begin to see how many times we're around great men that never say great things. But we, but, but we need to be, but we need to be around them to really catch what they do, because many times, sometimes men find it hard to communicate what they're trying to tell you, but they can show you more they can more they can tell more more than more than they can tell you. Are you following me now? Now, 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 now what am I saying? When we come into this text, we see that this is the first and only time that Abraham is talking to Isaac. The first and only time he has been believing God for almost 25 years for this child. This child at this particular time is a teenager. He's a teenager. He's not a young boy anymore. He's a teenager. And, and when we come into this text, God has spoken to Abraham. Abraham has had to heard the voice of God. It is clear what to do. What God tells him is go take your son your only son. Uh-oh, first of all, that was not his only son. But that was the only son that God approved of. I said that was not his only son. 
But that was the only sin that God approved of. It's amazing, it's amazing how we, are do, we, we, may, we may have done things in our past and you're counting your, 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 your experience based on what you've done. God says, I never told you to do that. You can count all you want, but I never told you to do that. Are you following me now? And so, and, so, and so now, God says, take your only son, your only son whom you love, whom you love, and take it to a place that I'm going to show you. I want you to sacrifice him there as a burnt offering. A burnt offering means everything goes. Everything catches on fire. Nothing is left. Are you following me now? Abraham Abraham saddles his ass early in the morning. Why? Because he's the, support, he's the source. He's the support. He's the sustainer. Are you following me now? He's the, the reason why he can saddle his ass in confidence is because he knows, he knows he's heard from God. Are you following me now? What am I saying? What we can do, the, 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 the most precious thing a man can have is hearing from God. You got to hear from God. What is God saying? Are you following me now? And so this man shadows, and notice, notice, Sarah is not, Sarah is not in the picture. He ain't, he, now whether or not he told her, I don't know. Hmm? But the Bible says that, that even Sarah looked up and called Abraham Lord. Hmm? Come on, I ain't calling nobody Lord. That's, that's, the, that's why you got problems. That's why you got <laughs> That's why you got problems. Now, was he perfect? No. He wasn't perfect. But, but, but the Bible says she called him what? Lord. In other words, husband. That's the name. Husband means Lord. Master. That's what that name means. Hmm? You think it means, you know, honey boo. No, husband need, means... You know, <laughs> <laughs> Our husband needs, he, that was, that's what it, that's what it need, means, Lord, husband. No, 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 no. Now, Abraham, Abraham, um, he, takes, he takes two young men and Isaac. He takes two young men. And Isaac, and they're going to the promise. They're going to where, they don't know where they're going. They're only, they're going, they're going to where they believe God has told them to go. But they don't know where. God says, I'm going to show you that place. But keep, keep moving. But notice, he takes himself and two young men plus Isaac. Because some things, sometimes, some things are for men only. For men only. It's amazing how many times mamas want to, they want to baby their boys. Uh, but, but some things, uh, some things you got to get from your father. Are you following me now? You can't be around mommy all, all day long. Lest you learn mommy ways. You got to be around some men. Are you following me now? He, bring, he didn't bring girls, he brought men because you got, because sometimes men got to do men stuff. Are you following me now? Man got to do what? Man stuff. He takes himself, two boys, and Isaac, and they're going to worship. They're going to do men. They're going to do, they're going to do some hard things. Some things that don't require emotional attachment. Oh, that's my boy. He's about to be dead, so leave him alone. I say he's about to be dead, so leave him alone. And no, no, he, no. And he should have messed the whole thing up. Mess the whole thing up. Oh, I can't, you can't kill my boy. Oh, Abraham, what are you doing? That ain't, that ain't this. I'm simply obeying God. Are you following me now? He goes to the place, the Bible says the third day, he looks up and he sees, he sees the place afar of off and it's a place called Moriah. He takes the boy and he's taking him to go sacrifice. Now, this is what he's believed God for, for years, for 25 years. All Abraham has talked about 
is Isaac. That's all he ever wanted was Isaac. I mean, I mean, Abraham would give his two hands and two feet to keep Abraham alive, to keep Isaac alive. However, he's heard from the source. He's heard from the source. Are you following me now? No, 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 no. Okay, 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 okay. And so this, and so when we, he takes this boy and he says, he tells the two boys, now, okay, you guys have played your part. Stay right here. I and the lad, lad are going to worship. The Bible says Isaac looks at the, the picture. He looks at, he looks at everything. And he says, Father, I see, the, I see the knife. I see the fire. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Uh-oh. That means that there had been some, at best, some observation from Isaac's part. That whenever you talk about a conversation with father, many times it's not necessarily exchange of words as, as, as it is just being in the presence. Just being there. Just being in the place. Just being in the place where you can glean from, from, from what the father is doing. The reason why Isaac is saying this is, is because Abraham is a worshiper. Matter of fact, when God calls Abraham, one of the first things he does in Genesis 12 is that he sets up an altar and he worships God. Are you following me now? No, no. And so Isaac... Isaac is now informing us that there had been some kind of conversation with the father. And so as I pulled that thread, I said, well, well what, else, what, what else would Abraham, what else, what else would Abraham have told his son? Because whatever else Abraham told his son, if we can glean from that, you and I can be the better of it. Are you following me now? And so I'm going to take you through very quickly. I'm going to take you through um, uh, 13 things that I believe Abraham would have shared with his son by way of maybe conversation or by way of observation. Are you following me now? 13 things that I believe that if, if we would glean from those things, we would be better fathers, better parents, better people as we extrapolate those points. Number one, number one. Now, all these are A. So the, the first word is A. A because not because, because not because Abraham gets an A in class, but A because of effort. Are you following me now? So the first word of every, every one of these 13 things begin with A. Amen? No. Number one, as, as we talk about the conversation with, with a father, number one. Now, I said father means what? Source. It means what? It also means sustainer or supporter. Support. That's what it means. Now, now before I go, before I go, before I go there, go, go to Romans, Romans 8 verse 15. Romans 8, verse 15, because I want you to see that in, in, in Scripture, that, 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 that you are, that you ought to be, that, that, you, that, that your, your father is Abba. Romans 8, where, where? Romans 8, verse 15, notice what it says. It says, for you have not received, well, let me, let me start in verse 14. Verse 14 says, for as many as are led by the as many as, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, what happens? They're the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again. You've not received what? The spirit of bondage again. Otherwise, nothing ought to be holding you bound. Are you following me now? You are a child of God. You are free. The Bible says where the Spirit of God is, is what? There's liberty. Amen. Stop allowing situations, circumstances, relationships, are you following me, to hold you bound. Especially if you ain't married. Get, you better leave that joke alone. Are you following me now? Leave that joke. I mean, if you ain't, especially if you ain't married and, they, and they're acting crazy, they, they're already telling you, they're already telling you they're crazy. Already telling you that. 
and you ought to pick up the signs and run. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. Notice what it says. It says, it says, there we go. It says, oh, I just left us. Okay. Hmm. It says, there we go. It says, for you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of what? Adoption. Whereby we do what? We cry, Abba. What? Father. Abba. For Abba, Abba Father says, I have intimacy with Father, but I also obey Father. Are you following me now? I have intimacy with Father, but I also obey Father. That, that word Abba means intimacy and obedience. Now, let's go to, let's go to, let's go to um, Galatians 4. Galatians 4. Intimacy and what? And obedience. Well, as a matter of fact, let's stop. Let's, let's see the obedience. Let's see the obedience. Let's go to, let's go to Mark. Mark 14, verse 36. I want, you to, I want you to see the obedience because many times we hear Abba, Father, and we think it just means Father. No, no. It means I have intimacy with the one I'm calling to, but I also obey the one I'm calling to. Uh, um, Matthew, Mark 14, Mark 14 and verse, and verse 35, Mark 14 and verse 35, notice what it says, Mark 14 and what, and verse 35 and 36, notice what it says, it says, and he went forward a little, <clears throat> he, went forward, he went forward a little, fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, and he said, he, 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 Jesus, he said, Abba, what? Father, Abba, source, Abba, sustainer, Abba, uh, uh, supporter. Are you following me now? Abba, I have a relationship with you. Abba, I obey you. Notice what it says. He says, he says, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what? But what but thou will. Are you seeing the obedience there? That I, I, I have intimacy with you. I'm the, you're the source. You are the supporter. You are the sustainer. You, 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 in other words, as a father, you are the support. Everything should fall on your shoulder. This should, when there's crisis in the home, it should fall. You should be the. You, you shouldn't be the one. You shouldn't be the one pulling your wig out. Huh? They should. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be encouraging you to go to work. Hey, baby, why don't you go to work, honey? It's five, it's, it's seven o'clock, baby. You got. We got to pay them bills. Baby, you know, you know, you know, you, you know, in a couple of days from now, they, they, they want the house and they'll pay. You got to go to work, baby. Are you kidding me? You married the wrong baby. Are you following me now? If you got to encourage him and prime him up to go to work, you married the wrong one. Because as a father, as a supporter, as a source, everything falls on your shoulder. Are you following me now? And if you don't, if you can't have enough backbone to do that, you ought not be a father. Are you following me now? Because, because fatherhood is serious business. That's serious business. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Go to, go, go to Galatians 4 and verse 6, and then, then we'll give, I'll give you those 13 things and we'll be done. Galatians 4, 6. Galatians 4, 6. Because, because, because notice, it, it, says, it says, look unto, look unto Abraham, your father. Notice it says your father. Look, look unto Abraham, your father, unto Sarah that bore you in Isaiah 51. He says, I called him what alone and did what? And I blessed him. No, 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 no. I is... Galatians 4, Galatians 4 and what? And verse 6. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's look at that. No, no, notice what it says. It says, it says, 
He says, verse 5 says, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has set forth, set, sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, what? Abba, Abba Father. He sent forth his spirit of sonship into your heart. What's that? Intimacy. And so you cry out what? Abba, Father. Now, let's give you this, this 13 things and we'll go home. 13 things and we'll go home. Now, now we said, we said, we, we said, we said, he said in Isaiah 51, look unto Abraham that bore you. Now, number one, number one, what would Abraham, what, what would Abraham, a, we're talking about, we're talking about a conf conversation, a conversation with the father, a conversation with the father. What would Abraham have said? Number one is answer the call, not the consequence. Number one, answer the call. Answer the call. Other words, a child, whatever, whatever else you want to be in life, answer the call of God on your life. Don't settle for the consequences. The consequences is when you disobey God. Answer the call. Find out what, does, what, is, what is God calling me to do. The clue to what God is calling you to do is what, what, what you love to do naturally. God, well, God, Bible talks about how God speaks through nature. Are you following me? He speaks through nature. And so he would say, he would say, son, answer the call of God on your life. It will save you a lifetime of misery. I believe that many times the reason why people have heartache or pain at home is because they haven't answered the call of God on their lives. Or they know the, they know the call of God and they're running away from it. And so it brings misery. Answer the call of God. So, so, so if, if, if Abraham was talking to Isaac, he would tell Isaac, I believe he would say, Isaac, my son, answer the call of God on your life. Answer the call of God on your life. And so as a father, my, 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 one of my purpose in life is to point my children to the call of God on their lives. Not to define that call, but, but, but to stand back and begin to learn and begin to hear them as they talk. And begin to point them. And many times it may not be the thing, but it will be the thing that leads them to that thing. Are you following me now? What does that mean? It means you've got to expose them to things so they have a variety they have a variety of things to pick from. Number 2, number 2, number 2. Now, now, now you find that you find that in you find that you find this in Genesis 12 1 to 1 to 3. Genesis 12 1 to 3. Number 2, number 2, number 2. Avoid logical thinking. Avoid logical thinking. That's in, 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 in Genesis 12, verse 10. Avoid logical thinking. In other words, Abraham received the call of God on his life. But the problem is there is a famine in the land. Abraham, at this particular time, has traveled eons of miles to get to the spot, the place, the moment that God had called him to get to. However, because of famine in the land, Abraham decides, I'm going to Egypt. There's plenty in Egypt, so I'm going to Egypt. Avoid what logical thinking. Just because it's logical doesn't mean it's God. I said just because it's logical doesn't mean it's God. Avoid logical thinking. Number, num, number three, I, I got to hurry up. Number three, number three, number three, number three. Also in Genesis 12, verse 12 on, Genesis 12, verse 11 on down. Assume God's provision is available. Assume God's provision is available. Notice the, the reason why Abraham goes to, the reason why Abraham goes to Egypt was because he did not assume what, that, 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 that he did not assume God's provision. In other words, if God gives you a call as the source, he will support whatever you're doing. 
He will sustain whatever you're doing. Assume God's pro provision. In other words, stop thinking, what, okay, stop thinking lack. Stop thinking running out. Are you following me now? Stop thinking it's not enough. It's always going to be enough. Assume the provision is always going to be there. Are you following me now? Number four, number four. Somebody say number four. Number four. Number four. Attach patience with your faith. Attach what? Patience with your faith. Patience is not, is not putting up with. That's not what patience is. Patience is a constant, steady belief that God's going to do what it says. Attach patience to your faith. In other words, Abraham, th that's in Genesis 15. Abraham will talk to God and he would say, uh, God, what will you give me seeing I go childless? And, and the person in my house, the one that's going to inherit, inherit everything that I'm going to, everything that I have, the one that's going to inherit everything that I have is Eliezer, Eliezer of Damascus. God says, hold on now, hold on, brother. Hold on, hold on. He, he, he says, no, 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 no. Understand this. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. Otherwise, I'm your source. I'm your source. Otherwise, otherwise, understand this. Have patience attached with your faith. The Bible says, with faith and patience, what? You inherit the promise. Faith and what? Pay, they're dual twins. You, in other words, yeah, you have faith that God's going to do it to, today, but it may take tomorrow. Are you following me now? You have, because the Bible says now faith is. You have faith that God's going to do it today. However, it may, it may last till tomorrow. What do you do if God doesn't come through today? You got to attach patience with your faith. Are you following me now? Number, number what? Number what? Number five. Number five. Authority to dominate is in your blood. Authority to dominate is in your blood. This is what I believe Abraham will talk, as he begins to talk to, talk to Isaac, he, he, he'll say authority to dominate is in your blood. The Bible says in Genesis 14 how, 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 uh, how a, a, a lot was captured by, by, by four kings. However, Abraham assembles uh, 318 men in his own household and attacks Four kings and their kingdom and defeats them at night. The Bible calls it the slaughter by night. Why? Because Abraham had the, he had the mindset of dominance, of dom dominion. In other words, dominion means take charge. Stop, al stop allowing life to take charge over you. You've got to take charge over life. Are you following me now? The authority to dominate. In other words, it's in your blood. It's in your blood to be the head and not the tail. It's in your, your blood to be above and not beneath. It's in your blood to be a winner and not a loser. It's in your blood. Somebody says it's in my blood. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. It's in your blood. Number number what? Num number six. Number six. All is not lost if you believe God. Number six. All is not lost. What? If you believe God. This is this is this is when this is when uh this is when uh uh, 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 uh in 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 uh in Genesis um in Genesis sixteen in, in, well in Genesis fifteen when uh when uh when he's uh when when God is talking to him. And he's telling God, well, it's been, it's been, it's been a whole, it's been almost 10 years, God. It's been, and God says, God says, no, 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 just believe me. And the Bible says in Genesis 15 verse 6, and Abraham believed God. And God counted it unto righteousness. Are you following me now? He believed God and God counted it unto Abraham as right. Are you following me now? All is not lost if you believe God. Now, number what? Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Number seven. Any action, any action outside the will of God carries consequences. Mm. 
Any action outside the will of God carries consequences. In other words, Abraham in Genesis chapter 16, he would, he would now, because he went into Egypt, there was this lady, this, this slave girl hanging around their house called Hagar. Hey, because, because now, because, um, because Sarah could not give birth, Sarah says to Abraham, uh, why don't you go into Haggai? Uh, it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be. Not God said, it could be. Not God said, it could be. Could be cost you a lot of money and you waste a lot of time. Are you following me? It could be, it cost you a lot of money and you waste a lot of time. Abraham's life got derailed from that point on. Why? Because he did not, he, he did not, he, he did not, he, he, he carried, because he had an action outside what God had instructed him to do. No, no, no. I, I got to keep going. Number, number eight, number, number, number eight, number eight, a change will come if you stay with God. A change will come. If you stay with God, that's worth coming right there. A change will come if you stay with God. In other words, Abraham, I know you've made this big mistake. You've made this big boo-boo. You've messed up. You've messed up everything. But God comes to Abraham in Genesis 17. And the Bible says God changes his name from, Abr from Abram to Abraham, from Sarai to Sarah. A change will come if you stay with God. I don't, I don't care how, how, whatever the enemy is trying to do in your life. If you stay with God, a change is about to come. Are you following me this morning? Number, let's go. N number, 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 number four. Num number nine, number nine, excuse me, number nine. Number nine, number nine, number nine. A promise is going to be born. A promise is going to be born. In other words, whatever you're believing God for, that promise, it is going to happen. If God gave you his word on that thing, you best believe that promise is going to show up on the earth. This is what I believe God, Abraham, a con, we're talking about a conversation with the father. Number, number, number 10, number 10, number 10. Ask Haggai in your, ask the Hagars in your life to, lay, to leave. Ask the Hagars in your life. The problem with Haggai is, is, is number, the, the problem with Haggai, you know, when I talk about Haggai, when I'm, when I'm talking about Haggai, I'm talking about relationships that you have that you know that are, that, are, that are outside the will of God. The problem with those relationships is they've been there for, long, for a long time. Not, not, only have they, not only have they been there for a long time, but they remind you of what you used to be. You've got to tell the Hagars in your life to leave. They're not going to leave on their own accord. You got to tell them to leave. Are you following? Me? Now, I mean, telling them to leave, you don't mean you got to call them and say, you're a hey guy in my life and you got to leave. That, no, that's not what you do. Are you following me this morning? Yeah, yeah you are a hey guy in my and you got to leave. No, no. It just means, it just means you, don't got to follow, you don't have to return their phone calls. Hmm? It means you got to distance yourself from them you know, tactfully and healthily. Are you following me now? It means you got to set boundaries in your life. Amen. Amen. It don't mean you got to make a new enemy. Amen. It just means that you just have to lay out rules or in your mind how to how to how am I going to how am I going to manage this relationship? But you got to let hey guy, you got to let hey guy in your life, you got to let them know it's time to leave. Are you following me now? Number and that was that was Genesis Genesis, Genesis 21 verse 9 to to, to 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 12. Number 11. Number number 11. Abraham, or you can put your name there. Abraham, or you can put your name there. You are going to be tested. Hmm? You are going to be tested. Otherwise, you say, well, well, well Pastor, I don't want to be tested. No, your testing is, 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 your testing is the platform of promotion. You're going to be tested. Are you following me now? You, even, even, even when you're minding your own business, you still going to be tested. You remember Job? Job over here minding his own business. God says, have you considered my, my servant Job? Otherwise, it's time for Job to be tested. Are you following me now? You're over here. You're, you're on a high. You're loving God. God, God you, can you imagine God telling the enemy, have you, have you considered my, my servant Frank? Hmm? 
Have you considered my servant Bill? Or have you looked lately at Sarah? Why? Because I need Sarah to be tested so she can go to the next level. Are you following me now? I need Sarah to be tested so Sarah can go to the next level. Abraham, what happens? You're going to be tested. Number, number, n- number 12. Number 12, number 12. Number, we're almost there. Number 12. Number 12. Asset for the next generation is necessary. Asset. Liabilities and asset. Asset. For the next generation is necessary. The Bible says in Genesis 24 how, 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 how Abraham, how Abraham uh, would, would, now, would, now, uh, would now send his servant to go find the wife for Isaac. Then the Bible talks about when he died, he gave everything that he had to what? To, to Isaac. Assets. Other words, I'm not just setting you up uh, for debt. I'm setting you up to get ahead. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave part of what I've accumulated in my life. I'm going to leave it to you. Are you following me now? That means I need to show you how to manage business, how to take care of business. Are you fo- I can't wait until I die for you to learn how to manage money. I got to teach you how to manage money while I'm living. Lest you waste your assets on stupid things. Are you following me now? And so, and so as such, I'm going to show you how to worship. As such, I'm going to take you around where I am. Are you following me now? Otherwise, we have to, we, I mean, uh, uh, many times we're, we're almost, we're almost take, uh, sending our children out there and they're going to college and they don't have a clue how to manage money. Are you following me now? And them, 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 them folks, them credit card companies, they know exactly where to go. They go to them colleges. And they, over, they got boots. They over here, come over here, uh, son. Come over here, daughter. And come sign them papers. <laughs> Are you following me? And you ain't taught them about nothing about credit. And so they're thinking it's free money. Free money is due every 30 days. Are you following me now? Now, now, last one, last one, last one, last one. Last. So, so we got to teach, we got we to ask, we got to set assets for the next generation is necessary. Number, n- number 13, alive yet dead. Alive what? Yet, yet dead. In other words, Abraham is called a friend of God. We're talking about Abraham and he's dead, but yet is alive. What am I saying? I'm saying that, that even in your death, what you've done, what you have deposited in your children should be alive in them. You shouldn't die with all the knowledge that you have in the grave. You should deposit all your know-how, all your ability, all your connection. You should deposit those things into your children. So when you are dead, yet you're alive. When you're dead and gone and they're talking about your influence, what you've said, what, you, what you've imparted, the wisdom that you've given. Are you following? We've got to, are you following me now? I'm saying we've got to, we've got to train our children. We've got to give them things that even in your death, those things will be speaking in their lives. Are you following me? And I believe if we do those things, we'll see incredible things happen, not only in our lives, but in the lives of our children. Did you you receive anything today? Will somebody give God praise and give God glory in the house of God this morning? A conversation with the Father. These 13 things if we apply these things in the life of our children, I believe it will affect their lives for the better. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Glory be to God. Father, we bless you today. We give you praise and glory. We thank you for your presence this morning. Spirit of the living God, We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning. We thank you for allowing us to be able to call you Abba, Father. And so we look to you this morning 
We look to you for our strength. We look to you as our source. We look to you as our sustainer. We look to you as our, our rock, our support, our foundation. We thank you for all that you have done this morning. Have your way in this place. Have your way in this place, God. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heads are bowed in reverence to God. Eyes are closed to respect the next person beside you. You hear today and you say, Pastor, I'm here today, but I, I don't have a relationship with my father. I don't have a relationship with my earthly father, and I, I don't have a relationship with my heavenly father. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that God will restore the relationship between you and your earthly father. And whatever, whatever is wrong, whatever situation may have happened, that the, that, that, that the blood of Jesus is still available to forgive, to cleanse, to set free. You're here today and you say, Pastor, I need, I need prayer in that issue. I need, I, need, I need a relationship with Jesus, with God. That's you this morning. Just lift your hands to heaven. Wave it high and put it down. Father, I see those hands. I give you praise. You're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I, I did know my heavenly father but I backslid and I walked away from God and I I want to come back home you can come back home anytime and today's your day you want to come back home today just lift your hands to heaven lift it high and put it down father we give you the praise we give you the glory we bless you for the hands that went up we, we thank you for your touch those of us that are online, we thank you for touching us even right now. We thank you for a new day, a new beginning. We thank you for making a way, God. Turning situations around, I pray. We bless you for who you are. For all that you have done. We bless you this morning. And we celebrate you in this house. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise. Come on, give God praise in the house. Give God praise in the house. Come on, give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen. Praise the name of Jesus. What a blessing. What a blessing. A conversation with the Father. Amen, amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Real quickly, we'll get out of here real quickly. Before we do, we want to worship God in our giving. Those of us that are online, those of us that are on ground, they're offering envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you. Amen. You want to sow a seed into what God is doing. We thank you, first of all, for your, your past, your future, and your present giving. Amen. You are helping to make it happen. Hallelujah. Also, understand we'll be changing our... Um, changing the uh, our call letters of the church and so all that needs to happen there we're still um, in process of doing those things that we need to get back amen we're still in process of doing those things but we're going to get it done and, and get it over the fence amen praise God amen thank you for your giving to support that those of us that uh, want to keep sowing you can give under vision Amen. Give under vision. We've, we've released the first half. Amen. Let's get all the finances in for the second half. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. What a blessing. Celebrate all the fathers again in the house of God. Amen. Amen. A special day. Amen. A special weekend. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
forget to call your father, amen. Call your brother, call your father, call your, your husband. Say so, call father, amen, amen. And wish him happy Father's Day, amen. Praise God, amen. What a blessing. Hallelujah. Those of us that are online, you want to sow, go, go to destinysouth.org, amen. Destinysouth.org. Go ahead and sow into the house of God, amen. Praise God. Those of us that are still watching that need to be in the building, come on back. We're doing all right here. Amen. Amen. We're doing all right. Corona, there's no corona here. We, we're following the CDC guidelines. And so I believe we're in phase five where if you're vaccinated, vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. And so we thank God for those things. Amen. Uh, and ultimately, it's God that is keeping you. Amen. It's not a mask or a magic six feet. Amen. It's God that is keeping you, amen. And so if you if you want to uh, come back in the building, we're here. Those of us that want to keep wearing masks, we can. Amen. Those of us that don't want to wear masks, it's not uh, mandatory anymore, amen. Praise God. But whichever way, God, Jesus Christ is Lord, amen, amen. Whichever way, Jesus Christ is Lord, amen. And so if you want to get a mask, come on in. And, and I know I still wear my mask if I go places, amen. And, uh, but uh, you know, sometimes I just I just like it because they can't see my mouth. Amen. It's curse. I'm, I'm cursing you out, and you can't even tell. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm playing. I'm playing. Amen. I'm like I, you know, shoot. I keep my mask on. Amen. Praise God. You got your mask on. I got my mask on. We are doing all right. Amen. You can't tell who I am. I can't tell who you are. We are doing all right. Amen. So anyhow, praise God. All right. If you're ready to give, go ahead and stand to your feet. Those of us that are online, go to destinysouth.org. God bless you. Thank you for giving. Thank you for being here in the presence of God. A happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day for those of us that are online. God bless you. Uh, it's right, it's, uh, and uh, we're just going to give God praise, say the benediction, and, uh, and, and leave and uh, continue to enjoy our day. But may God bless you. May his hand be upon you and give you rest. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.